Let's look at an example of using binary trees. Morse code is a signaling protocol. You can transmit a message by using lights or sounds. The signals are either long or short, and each letter is encoded as a sequence of signals. So A is a dot dash, that means a short and then a long signal, and B is a long signal followed by three short. Here's a problem. Let's implement a function called Morse that builds a tree out of a dictionary so that the function decode uses that tree to decode correctly. Here's a dictionary of all the different signals for each letter of the alphabet A, B, C, D, E. The decode function takes in a string of signals, something like dash dot dot dot, and then a tree. We haven't built that tree yet, that's our job. What happens is that we create this tree and pass it into decode along with the signal string, and it gives us back the letter, A, B, C, D, or E. Here we've applied decode to five, oh sorry, six different signal strings. So applying it to this one, using our Morse code tree, gives us the letter D. And this is E, and this is C, and if we decode them all, we get decade. Now the way decode works is fixed for us. It says it goes through all the signals in the input. If the signal is dot, it replaces tree with tree.left. If the signal is dash, it replaces it with tree.right, and then returns the entry at the tree that remains. This is a common pattern for traversing a tree. You just have a name for the current tree. Now each branch is a tree as well. And here we're going to the left branch or the right branch depending on the signal. Okay. So now we're going to try to define a function Morse that takes in a dictionary, like A, B, C, D, E here, and returns a tree that allows us to traverse through character by character in the signal until we reach the entry that has the letter encoded by those dots and dashes. So in this file, I have the decode function that we just looked at, the encodings of A, B, C, D, and E, and then the tree class and the binary tree class from lecture. Remember that binary tree inherits from tree. However, it has a different constructor that takes a left branch and a right branch, and it also has the properties left and right, which give the branches at index 0 and 1. The whole point of a binary tree is that it always has exactly two branches. In order to represent a branch with nothing in it, we have a special class attribute called empty. Binary tree.empty is the default value for the left and the right. So the way I'll construct a tree is to start out by building the root, and the root is a binary tree with a root entry that we'll just have as a space, as a placeholder. And what Morse is going to do is it's going to traverse the tree for every signal in A, B, C, D, E. And it's going to place the letter at the entry that you reach by traversing the tree in this way. So that when decode traverses the same tree, it will find that letter. At the root, there's no letter because there's no letter that's encoded as no dots or no dashes. Everything has at least one dot or at least one dash. Now, we need to go through every letter and every string of signals in the code that gets passed in, which is a dictionary, and the entries of a dictionary are the key value pairs. So this gives us a collection of all the key value pairs in some arbitrary order, and here we're splitting them up into the letter and the signals. Now the tree at which we're going to put the letter as the root starts out as the root of the tree, and then we will traverse the tree, and then at the end, we're going to set tree.entry to equal the letter. Now what's traversing the tree? Well, it actually looks just like what we did for decode. We go through for every signal in the signals, and we ask, is the signal a dot? Then we replace tree with tree.left. Otherwise, if the signal 
is a dash. We replace the tree with tree dot right. At the end, we return the root of the tree, and we now have an encoding of all the different letters. Now this is a good partial credit solution, but it doesn't quite work. And it doesn't work because the tree that we created at the beginning is the root, which is a binary tree that has empty left and right branches. So if I go to the left branch, I'll get an empty tree. And you can't put things at the root of an empty tree. I mean, you could, but that's not how empty trees are meant to be used. So instead, we need to ensure that there's a non-empty tree at the left branch if we want to place a letter down somewhere below that root. So we're going to call ensure on tree. And with the left branches at index 0, so we'll pass in 0. And here we want to ensure that there's a tr branch at index 1, and if so, return it. Now, ensure isn't something that's built in. We have to define it. So let's try that. Ensure is a function that takes in a tree and an index k. If it's the case that tree.branches k is the empty binary tree, then we have a problem. And so what we need to do is replace that branch with a tree that's not empty something that could receive a letter. So how about we just write tree.branches k is a new binary tree. This time it's not empty. It contains a space. And finally, we'll return tree.branches k. OK, so A, B, C, D, E is a dictionary. If I call Morse on A, B, C, D, E, I get a tree. It's a little bit hard to see what's going on. But it should be that the left branch of that tree is everything that starts with a dot, which is just A is dot dash, and E is dot. So the left branch of this tree should contain E. There it is. And then if we follow the right branch of that, which is a dash, we'll reach A. And all of the other letters here start with a dash and then a dot. Dash, dot, dash, dot, dash, dot, which we should be able to reach by going right for the dash and then left for the dot. And here we see a branch of the tree in which there's no dash, dot, but there is a dash, dot, dot. That would be D. There's also a dash, dot, dot, dot. That is a branch just below D. And finally, there's dash, dot, and then we go right again, so that's dash, and then we do the left branch of that, that's dot, and we find the C. Now let's see if decode works. Decode takes in some signals. Let's go with the signals for C. It also needs a Morse encoding of the original A, B, C, D, E. And that gives us the letter C. So we fulfilled the requirements. Now you might wonder why we don't just go through for every signal string, all of the different items in the dictionary, well, that's a reasonable thing to do as well. But it does mean searching over all the different items, which could take a while. So by encoding it as a tree, we could just directly look up the letter for each signal sequence by traversing the tree. 